Guys, in the last three days, the only thing I saw in front of my face was the freaking Horn of Fury. Opening my comment section, Horn of Fury. Opening the game, Horn of Fury. Eating a banana for breakfast, Horn of Fury. Taking a shower, Horn of Fury. Literally nine questions out of ten after my rage Syria were about the Horn of Fury. Which is good, I'm not gonna complain about it. I mean, some of you panicked because you forged multiple horns, but trust me, you don't need to panic. I have never said that the horn is trash and you should get a refund, because actually the horn is very valuable. You just need to know where and when to use it, because not in every situation and with every commander it will be that valuable comparing to other accessories. That's the topic of today's video. Let's talk about it. Hello gamers and welcome back to Wig Gaming. While I was planning for some neat content about the Wheel of Fortune probability, I thought first I had to address your concerns about the equipments. You guys loved the Rage Breakdown series and you literally crushed the like button. You punched it right in the face. Also, thank you for 30,000 subscribers, that's awesome. Please drop a like and consider subscribing, it helps me more than you think. Alright. According to our researchers, that's a quick recap of what we know now. 1. There is a rage limit in your turn accumulation and it's 220. This means that you cannot gain more than 220 rage per turn. 2. You will gain 86 rage per turn with your direct attacks, 16 rage per turn for each counterattack you deal to any march on the field, plus up to 20 rage points of compensation, 10 plus 10, which are based on if you're losing or winning a trade. I already explained that in my previous video, card up on the top. 3. Very important for today's video, we proved that any rage reduction effects will be applied after the rage cap. It means that if you, for instance, gain 400 rage on a single turn, the game will first reduce that rage to the 220 cap and then, only then, any other reduction effect will be applied. Herman, Amanitor, Silent Trial, etc. This opened a broad discussion about the utility of the Silent Trial and the Horn of Fury. And it's perfect, those are the things I like to discuss about with you guys. Should you prefer the Silent Trial, which will grant a 10 or 13 rage reduction if specialized every single turn, or a Horn of Fury, which will grant you a 50 rage boost 30% of the time? My answer is, it all depends on the player and the situation. I'll give you two important examples. Imagine a scenario in which you are garrison leader in KVK. You are garrisoning, let's say, with your Zenobia and YSS. Your garrison leader has an amazingly strong equipment and the structure is well reinforced, so the enemy does not dare swarming it. This means that aside from the base rage and eventual compensation, there will be no other rage engine around you. Probably if one of the two parties were also owning the territory with some field control except certain specific situations, you would win the rally trade and some big players would feel more comfortable swarming the structure, but that's not the case we are speaking about. It's a 1v1, rally versus garrison. In this case, both parties, rally and garrison, would benefit a lot from a horn of fury, because, as I said, without any other rage engine, it will be nearly impossible to reach the limit of 220 and therefore for the rage to be wasted. Now, imagine the same situation, but in Ark of Osiris. There, every structure will be swarmed 100% of the time, because you don't have to be worried about dead troops. You will always have the maximum number of marches swarming, which is 10. The garrison will be gaining minimum 86 attack rage plus 160 counterattack rage. And we did not consider any base rage talents like Undying Fury or Burning Blood, especially in the case of the defense tree. That talent is going to scale up based on the number of people swarming you. And we didn't consider any compensation as well, also because it's difficult that the proper garrison loses the trade against a field march. And 86 plus 160 is already 246, well above the rage limitation. And as I said, no matter if you gain 220 rage or 500 rage in that turn, any rage reduction effect will apply on the 220 cap, at least for how things work as of now. I don't know if Lilith will change it in the future. So 
Is the horn useful in that specific situation? Absolutely not. You are literally wasting an accessory slot for zero return. You would have a better return with a dagger and a ring, or probably a ring and a vengeance, considering the amount of targets swarming you. Again, it also depends on many other factors, such as the reinforcements, the commanders you are using, and so on. So, we have a first scenario where it can be really good to use the horn, and another one where it can be really bad to use one. Non-swarmed garrisons, the horn is awesome. Swarmed garrisons, the horn is literally useless. What about the rallies? As I said, if the rally is there, hitting alone, without being touched, the horn is super beneficial. That's why some short cycle commanders, such as Zhang Yu, benefit so much from a horn, because it helps this march keep the cycle consistently short. Attila and Takeda, or Attila and Chandra rallies, can benefit from a horn, because very few brave or reckless players will swarm it down. Same story for high counterattack infantry like Pakal and Harald. The horn there can be quite beneficial. In Arcovasaris, either you win or you lose your rally, and that will happen very quickly. So probably there is not much difference in using a horn or something else. Of course, if your rallies always get swarmed, maybe the horn is not the best option after all. That's where the silent trial is actually extremely beneficial. If you're swarming a city or a structure with 10 marches, for instance, using 10 silent trials, this will help you so much in keeping the enemy's skill cycle extremely long. Potentially, you can reduce up to 130 rage if all 10 silent trials are specialized, and that will be deducted from the 220 cap which the garrison will always reach because of the swarm itself. 220 minus 130 equals to 90, and the garrison will never gain more than 90 rage per turn. Imagine now if you have a couple Amanitor swarming. For a few turns, the garrison will literally gain zero rage per turn. Powerful, huh? I'm sure a few people will try this out now. But hey, I know you are interested in knowing what about the open field? Should I use a Horn of Fury or a Silent Trial there or something else? Well, the comparison between Horn and Silent Trial is not really a thing. The Horn of Fury is a niche accessory, most of the players cannot afford it. I personally don't even have one. And the Silent Trial is relatively easy to obtain during some seasonal events or with a bit of grinding on the map. For anyone from free to play to mid spenders, the Silent Trial is a gem for your marches, and if you don't pick too many rage talents like the final one on the skill tree, Feral Nature, I mean, there are cases in which you should pick Feral Nature, but we will speak about it in a separate video where I will give you all of my talent trees. As I was saying, if you don't pick too many rage talents, the horn can still be a powerful choice. Like I said in pretty much every video, rage effects stacking are not that frequent, but there are teams with many Trajans, many Williams, and even many Joan of Arc. This type of marches will increase your chances to overrage dramatically. So control your talents. Using a horn is still okay in open field, but I have personally other priorities among the legendary accessories, which I'm going to list now. One, concealed dagger. I have always spoke highly of this accessory, and I considered it the number one choice for pretty much any open field march, especially support players and free-to-play that with some grind managed to craft their first legendary accessory. 2. Ring of Doom. With all these AoE commanders around, the Ring of Doom is a powerful choice in open field. 3. Mora's Web. Same story of the Concealed Dagger, this accessory is as powerful as underestimated. 4. Vengeance. Especially on high priority targets, having a vengeance is great. Guan Yu, Amanitor, Zhang Yu, or even capitalize on commanders that already have a huge amount of counterattack damage Attila, Harold, Charles Martel, Pakal, etc. 5. Here and only here, I would consider the Horn of Fury among the legendary accessories in a big open field brawl. Among the epic accessories, I am a big fan of 1. Silent Trial. Rage reduction is never wasted, especially after the discovery that it applies after the rage cap. 2. Ancient Stratagems. 
Having more troops than your enemy will help you in every way, attacks, counterattacks, skill damage, this is probably one of the most powerful accessories in the entire game. 3. The Lane's Amulet. Reducing the counterattack damage taken is always a great option. These three are probably my top choices for epic accessories and I personally use all three of them. There are of course other niche accessories such as the epic one for the infantry march speed, which I personally use on my Guan, or the elite flag with march speed, which you can use on your runners, etc. Like I always tell you, it all depends on your role, your commanders and also your overall setup. There is not a single answer to everything and whoever says to do something without knowing your context is probably not dedicating you enough attention. I am confident every one of you can use the information we provided about Rage to make your own decisions. Math aside, this is my opinion, which I like to back up with some data, but it does not mean it is better than your opinion. I will see you on the next one. Ciao!